Our play takes place in a small southern town of Green Tree, Mississippi, 1954. The lodge members are a simple country folk, but to them masonry is serious and they do their best to live it. Star Hill Lodge just finished conferring the Fellowcraft degree on Brother Hank Johnson. As we open the first scene, Hank is just about to take his turn speaking. Brother Johnson, everyone's had an opportunity to go around the room and offer you congratulations and to offer you some advice on how to best learn your lesson for the fellow craft so that you can proceed to the Master Mason. As is our custom, it is now the time that we want to hear any comments that you might have to say, so the floor is yours. Uh, we're, we're for Master. Uh, I ain't, I, I, uh, I, I, ain't, I ain't real smart, but uh, I ain't got no learning in me. I, I can't, I can't make no speeches. But uh, uh, brother Billy, he, he, he's the same for just putting up with me. But uh, the greatest thing in my heart and in my life is getting to be a master mason like all y'all. That's what I really, really want. But now, I, I got to get down down to the theater. Them kids is waiting on me now. And, and, and that's my job. Well, Brother Johnson, I'm sure that you'll do just fine in learning this lesson, just like you did your entered apprentice. And I know that you've got to get on to work, so you're excused from lodge. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Brethren, before we close the proceedings tonight, is there any brother present that has any comments that they would like to add to tonight's meeting? Worshipful Master, i got a few things I want to say. Brother Jones, I'm glad that you uh, stood up. I, I, I must apologize to you. Uh, I did not recognize you and introduce you to the lodge uh, whenever you first came in, but I'd like to correct that error now. Brethren, I'd like at this time to introduce you to your District Deputy Grand Lecturer, that is new to our area, Brother Robert Jones. Worshipful Master, I was pleased with the meal and the reception I received, and I appreciate you not introducing me in the middle of a degree. In fact, that's one of the few things that I've seen done right here today. Now, the timing and delivery of this degree did not meet my expectation in the least. Well, Brother Jones, I'm sorry that our uh, degree work and our ritual work did not meet your expectation, but if you'll tell us exactly what it is that we've done wrong, we'll see if you can't make your next visit a little bit more pleasurable. Well, I'll just be more than happy to do that, Worshipful Master. In the first place, your candidate there had to be prompted several times just to get things even close to being right. That threw the timing and delivery of this degree off, which wasn't that good to begin with. And look at the way you're dressed. I mean, anybody... Now, wait a minute, Brother Jones. First and foremost, I don't know if it escaped your attention when you drove into this town, but we're just a small farming community. Just poor farmers just trying to survive here. We ain't like you. We can't afford them big highfalutin' suits like you got on. And as far as our candidate goes... The man said it best when he said he ain't got no learning in him. As a matter of fact, he ain't got any formal education. The man can barely read or write. Brother Jones, it took Hank four months to learn his memory work for his first degree proficiency. And that was working with his coach every single day. And you being the DDGL and all should know that that's three times as long as it takes the average Mason to learn theirs. But I'll tell you something you don't know. Trying to teach Hank is like trying to teach a mule to read a pocket watch. But as long as Hank don't quit on us, we sure ain't gonna quit on him. Hank ain't got no learning in his brain, but he's got the best kind of education that is. That's in his heart. He's a man that cares. If there's any man around here that's ever been sick, Hank has been right there to take care of him. Any little child that breaks a toy, Hank is right there to fix it. Hank is a man that cares. Hank is one of our brothers. Well, Hank works down there at the theater, and the guy that owns the place says he can't afford to pay him very much. Well, we all kind of question all about that. But on the other hand, Hank does everything down there. He, he sweeps, cleans the place up. 
he, he pops the popcorn, he serves the drinks to the kids. Mm, right. And, and if, right. it wasn't, if it wasn't yeah. for old Hank, our kids wouldn't get to see any of the movies and the stuff that's going on now. So he, he's one of us. We yeah. like old Hank. I can see why you think so much of this man. He's one of you. I understand that. But the fact still remains. The lodges in this district, they're much too lax to suit me. Jackson Corners put on a degree just last week. Didn't give proper notice to its members. Oak Hill Lodge meant in a church while repairs on their lodge is being done. Well, there ain't nothing wrong with meeting in a church, but you got to do it with permission of the Grand Lodge. It's against Masonic law. That's the fire law. It's a theater. Our kids are in there. The fire at the Palace Theater in Green Tree, Mississippi was a disaster that shocked the entire state. Hank Johnson ran into the burning theater and using a rope slowly lowered several children to their safety. During the fire, the floor gave way and Hank, along with three children, went down into the inferno and was terribly burned. All the children survived, but they'll need long hours of treatment. Hank didn't do as well. The doctor said that he wouldn't live much longer. They did all that they could do, but the burns were just too severe. The scene is again at Star Hill Lodge three days later. The lodge has just been opening a Master Mason's degree. Brethren, I want to welcome you to this special call communication. I want to apologize to you from having to call you away from your families, especially during a time like this. But before we get started, I have to I have to ask, Brother Billy, how's your little girl doing? She's going to make it worshipful, thanks to Hank Johnson. She's going to have quite a few scars, but she will pull through. I'm glad to hear that, Brother Billy. You know, my, my boy, well, he burned pretty bad, too. And uh, Hank told me whenever I went to see him that my son refused to allow him to lower him to safety until all the girls were lowered down. Worshipful, when you called this special meeting, you didn't say what it was going to be about. Brother Junior Warden, the reason I called this meeting is so that we can confer Brother Hank Johnson's Master Mason's degree. What's for? He just got his fellow craft degree last week. He ain't even started learning on his memory work, and you know how long it takes him to learn anything. Well, Brother Junior Warden, I understand what you're saying, but I can't help that. This is within my power, and Hank wants to be made a Master Mason, and I'm going to do it. Worshipful, you know we will follow you into this because we know where your heart is. Star Hill Lodge is an old and honorable lodge, but you need to count the cost of what you are about to do. Well, Brother Senior Warden, I appreciate your counsel on this, and I understand that, and I know what I'm about to do could very well get me thrown out of lodge. But it's the last wish of Hank Johnson to be made a Master Mason and I'm going to do it. Well, I'm with you, Worshipful. You can count on me, Worshipful. I'll be with you. Well, Worshipful, I ain't never been thrown out in a lodge. But I'm in, too. Brother, thank you very much for helping putting this on. But I will not allow it to be seen in the minutes of this meeting that anyone other than I am the one that vouched for Hank's proficiency. Brother Secretary, let the minutes reflect that it was the master and the master alone that vouched for Hank's proficiency. If that's the way you want it, master, that's the way it'll be. Worshipful, one of the first lessons that we learn in Freemasonry is that before engaging in any important activity, that we first invoke a blessing of deity. If you don't mind, could you ask Brother Chaplin to say a short prayer for Hank? I think that'd be a good idea, Brother Junior Warden. Brother Chaplin, would you lead us in a word of prayer before we go and perform this Master Mason degree for Brother Hank Johnson. Brother Chaplain, our Father in Heaven, we come to you to ask that you be with our Brother Hank at his hour of great need. Lord, if it is in your will to call him home, please allow us the time that we need to make him a Master Mason before he dies. 
Father Hank wanted to become a Master Mason more than anything in the whole world. For all the mercies and blessings that you give us, we are truly thankful. Especially for Christ Jesus, who died on Calvary's cross so that we would have the opportunity to be with you in your house for eternity. Amen. So be. Hey, fellas, we better go. We don't have a whole lot of time. Hank Johnson was a poor and uneducated man, but he knew how to give and how to love. Hank was God's gift to mankind. We humans seldom blessed with the opportunity to see angels in our lifetime. But God gave the people of this small town in Mississippi a chance to see a man with the heart of an angel and the strength of a lion. Every resource modern medicine had to offer was attempted to no avail. Hank passed away but he met the supreme architect of the universe as a master mason. His brother masons made sure of that. Hank gave everything he had to save those children, and his brothers and Christ did everything they could to make sure that Hank's final wish came true. It is now two days later in Star Hill Lodge. It has just opened in the lodge in the master mason's degree. Brother, I want to welcome you to the state of communication of Star Hill Lodge. Brother Secretary, we'll have a reading of the minutes from the special communication from three days ago. You mean the minutes of the regular state of meeting, you don't mean the ones on the special one? It's got to be done, Don. At a special communication at Star Hill Lodge, number 123, held on Wednesday, May the 6th, 1954, the lodge was opened in due form with all the principal officers present and in their station. Members present were John Andrews, Worshipful Master, Billy Kent, Senior Warden, Ronnie Smith, Junior Warden, Don Davis, Secretary, Jim Travis, Treasurer, Frank Wills, Tyler, and Chaplain, Leonard Bird. Minutes of the last meeting were read and confirmed. The Worshipful Master informed the lots that the special communication was called for the very purpose of conferring the Master Mason's degree on Brother Hank Johnson. The fellow craft examination was waived because of the condition of the candidate. The Master Mason's degree was conferred in short form at Mercy General Hospital and the lodge was closed in peace and harmony. Don Davis, Secretary. Brethren, you've all heard, had an opportunity to hear the minutes as they were read from our special communication. Is there any brethren present that has a comment about those minutes? Worshipful Master, permit me to offer correction to those minutes. They're incorrect. No district deputy likes having to suspend a Worshipful Master. But those minutes as they're read, I don't have a choice. It wasn't just the Master, it was all of us. Hank Johnson gave his life to save our children, and if we had to do it over again, we would do it. Hank Johnson was the finest man I ever had the privilege to know. He was our Masonic brother and our friend. All Hank ever wanted was to wear the ring of a Master Mason on his hand. I went and bought him one, and when we finished that degree, I slipped that ring on the only finger on Hank's hand that wasn't burned. And even through all the medication he was on, I could still see the pain in his eyes. But you know, I saw something else. I saw love. I saw that same look of love last week when he was helping little Jimmy Kent put his sprocket on his bicycle. I saw that same look of love two weeks ago when Hank took part of his own paycheck. His own paycheck. To go help Widow Perkins buy herself some groceries. It's that same look I've seen hundreds of times when Hank would go out of his way to help somebody that couldn't help themselves. That's all I got to say was. We were with him when he took his last breath. 
But we saw a tear of gratitude in that man's eyes, and I knew right then we were looking at one of God's angels. And if we had to do it over again, we would do it. That's all i got to say, worshipful. Brethren, it's going to be okay. Brother Jones, I want you to understand that it was my will alone, and it was me that vouched for his proficiency. And if there's some type of punishment that should be doled out, it should, it should rest on me, and not this lodge or its members. I'm not here to dole out punishment. I'm not here to place blame. I'm here for one reason only, and that is to offer a correction of those minutes as they're written. I have it right here, if you'll allow me to read it. I got a letter from Hank's mama, Brother Jones, that I'd like to read to the lodge at this time. Well, if that's a letter from Hank's mama, we need to hear that before we hear from the Grand Lodge. To Hank's brothers down at the Masonic Lodge, gentlemen, we are not educated people, and we ain't got much, never have had, but because of you, my son was happier than I've ever seen him in his whole life. You gave him a sense of purpose and you showed him that he was not too slow to learn new things. I've seen several of you gentlemen come to our house and sit for countless hours talking to Hank out on the swing in our yard. And when Hank would come back into the house, he would say, Mama, I learned two whole sentences of my Masonic work today. I can't tell you what that was on account that it's a secret and all. But I can say that some of the th these things that I learned just come right out of the Bible. Amen. Just like some of them Mason men way back then when was part of the Bible. When you first started teaching Hank things, he'd say, Mama, I don't know if I can learn all this stuff. They is trying to teach me. It's hard. And I can't remember all of them words just right. But them men said that so long as I kept trying... They ain't never going to stop learning me. And sure enough, gentlemen, slowly over time I started to see a new light in Hank's eyes that I've never seen before because of some of the, them things that he learned from you. I can't put my finger on it exactly. I can't really explain it, but after a while when you're teaching Hank stuff, I started to see changes in him. He stood a little taller. He didn't stutter quite as bad as he had more confidence in himself. He told me, Mama, there's some fine men down at that Masonic Lodge. Some of them fellows I've looked up to my whole life as my heroes. Sometimes at Christmas, I've seen a, some of those Masonic fellows leave food and stuff on our front porch when they didn't think that nobody was watching and they'd do that for other poor folks just like us too. I don't know who there was then, but now I do. That was my brothers. They got hospitals in some of them big cities that folks can bring their sick kids to, and them doctors and nurses at them Mason's hospitals makes them well again, and they walk right out of their places. And if their folks ain't got no money to pay like us, they don't have to pay nothing at all. They even got places that folks can stay in so they're close to their kids while they're sick, and they don't even have to pay money for them either. That's the kind of folks them Masons are, is, and I'm going to get me one of them. I'm saving my money so I can buy me one of those Mason rings when I get done with my learning so I can show everybody that now I'm one of them Masons too. When y'all gave Hank that mason's ring and he put it on his finger, that was the proudest moment of my son's life. There wasn't a doctor, nurse, or visitor that walked into the room that he didn't show that ring and he would say, look at my ring. It's, I'm a ma master mason now. That's right, Hank. You all gave that to him. You gave him a sense of pride and the feeling that he was part of something much bigger than our little world here in Greenleaf. For what you did for him, I can never repay you. Just know that in my heart, I know that because of you, my son died knowing that he was part of a true brotherhood. Signed, 
Hilda Johnson, Hank's mama. I still got this letter from the Grand Lodge, if that's important to you. Is it okay if I read it now? Well, now you can read it. To the Worshipful Master, Wardens and Brethren of Star Hill Lodge, number 123, Green Tree, Mississippi. Brethren, Brother Hank Johnson ran his race and reached the end of life's journey as a Master Mason. May we never forget the lessons that Hank taught us. He proved his proficiency, not with his words, but with his heart. Hank passed the greatest examination that can be given to a human being. It is with heartfelt pride that I issue my official dispensation for the sublime degree of Master Mason to be conferred on Brother Hank Johnson. Signed, Henry Adams, Grand Master, Free and Accepted Masons of Mississippi. Worshipful Master, may I suggest that you have the Secretary amend the meeting minutes and then there will be no need for the Grand Lodge to take any action whatsoever against this Lodge or its Worshipful Master. Brother Secretary, amend the minutes to reflect what the District Deputy Grand Lecturer has conveyed here from the Grand Lodge. Minutes will be corrected. Brother Jones, I have just one question for you. How did the Grand Master know that we conferred that Master Mason's degree? Let's just say an interested brother called him and told him about it. Who made that call? Nobody but the members of this lodge knew that we conferred that Master Mason's degree. This is a small town, worshipers. My hotel room's right across that street out there. I saw you and the members of this lodge leaving with that lodge Bible. And I knew there wasn't but one reason that you'd take that Bible out of this lodge. The rest of it wasn't real hard to figure out. You mean you're the one that called the Grand Master? I made that call, worshipful. This lodge might not be the best at Masonic ritual, but there is none better at applying Masonic principles. That concludes our play this evening. We sincerely hope you enjoyed it. Please allow me to introduce you to the cast. The star of the show, Hank Johnson, was played by Ryan Rickles. Our junior warden, Jason Porter. Our senior warden, Terry Lewis. Worshipful master, Alan Dover. Our secretary, Harold Seaver. Our chaplain, Leonard Bird. And our narrator, as I, William Combs. Our district deputy grand lecturer was Danny Fisher who wrote and directed the play also.